So you could break this episode up into three bits. You have the beginning bit, pretty much the aftermath. Everyone is like scrambling what's going on. You know, just everybody's meeting up again, reunions and stuff like that. And just overall the explanation of the bomb. So you have that bit. You have the second bit with Gone pretty much. I'm going to kill you. I am a madman. I am a nut job. And then you have the third bit with the ants, UP and Poof. And pretty much that they're going freaking ham looking for the king. So you have three different bits. Now the beginning bit for the most part it was the aftermath of things so things are obviously aren't going to be in high gear and i'm glad that we got an explanation of that bomb because i know a lot of people probably would have called bs like how did one simple bomb take out the king and netero when you know they're supposed to be these super beings and they have nen and all that and i'm glad we got an explanation as to how much of a threat these bombs were to the point where the government was like yo we got to get rid of these bombs and still that they were left around though because people were just like, we don't want to get rid of the stuff we already created. So it gave us a good explanation so it's not just like later on people don't say, what the fuck? You know, a simple bomb did the job. It definitely gave a good scenario as to how powerful these bombs were to the point where people were like scared of them and afraid of them and just giving an explanation on that. The reunion bits felt a little bit slow in the beginning, just kind of like everyone regrouping, trying to understand what the hell they're going to do and just overall just coming together, realizing, Yo, so it seems as though the king is down at this point I don't think they realize that Netero is gone and I'm kind of curious as to why because usually they can sense someone's men or anything like that but maybe they're just assuming that he's like so tired or something like that but you can see that none of them really understand what went down in that battle or what you know just overall what occurred between Netero and the king and I definitely felt there was an inner message within this episode regarding just the humans and the ants and kind of how the tables have turned so to speak because in the going part where going is pretty much like yo you're tired Time is up, and if you try to slow me down one more time, I'm going to kill Kamugi. And it went from, like, the humans being in despair and kind of scared of the ants to now almost the humans have the ants on the opposite side and the humans are being more monstrous than the ants because he's pretty much threatening her. Then he says, you know what? That's pretty much my hostage. If something happens to me, you get rid of this girl. So it's definitely looking a lot more like the message is that the ants have pushed the humans to the point where... Now, the ants are kind of like acting more human-like, and the humans are evolving more into being like monsters. Like, the way Gon is at this particular point, he went from a happy-go-lucky kid to he's threatening to kill. Like, he don't give a shit. At a moment's notice, he will kill another human. So, definitely, that's what I got the message of this episode. Definitely feels that humans are becoming more monsters, and humans can be more monsters than the animals that we are scared of sometimes, or the beasts, or the monsters, they can be monsters themselves. But I can't even front, one of my favorite moments, probably the best moment of the episode, or second best, depending on what you like the most, was when Gon just was there badass, the art, the animation of just him going, I'm gonna kill her if you don't, like, Gon right now, he is in a whole different league, a whole different type of character, and it's just phenomenal, I love that bit. And it's interesting that even though Kido on Knuckle and them felt like yeah, Gon can't take Pito by himself. For the most part, they were like, fuck it, you know what? We're just gonna go along with his plan, and if we die, we die. Like, these are the type of people that they don't give a shit. Like, they are willing to die for their cause and for their people, and I respect that. And then the third bit with Poof and Yuppie pretty much looking for the king, that felt tragic. First of all, you see that it's affecting them to the core, to the point where when Knuckles seen that clone of Poof, like he was looking more like an ant, like an animal, like his face was starting to like melt off the clone or whatever, or just morphed into that form. So you can see that there's still more to the ants. At, at the very least, the Royal Guards, there's still more to them, or that's their true form, their true nature, so to speak. And it's affecting them to the core, to the point where never would I... Thought I would see Yupi nonetheless. Maybe Poof, I could imagine, but Yupi there screaming, crying in agony, and then Poof. That goes to show how much their lives and the focus of everything in their world pretty much is around the Ant King Meduim. Like everything uh, uh, surrounding their lives is about this guy, and that's why they were in agony. That's why they care so much because that is what they were born to do. That is their destiny to protect them. And I think a part of it is losing their, their ultimate goal in life and at the same time failing to do what they were born to do, and that's protect the king. And when you see him there, and it's so dark, like, I'm going to have to go back and, like, brighten up the episode or maybe take some screenshots and look at it, because it's so dark. All you see is, like, a black rock-looking thing, and it's like, so that's what the king has amounted to? Like, he's just a, a, a pile of, like, frozen stone, like on some Vegeta when he tried to blow himself up. He's just been petrified there, like, what a fucked up way to go out. And I honestly wasn't expecting it to go out this way because, like, when he jumped out the way, I was assuming, okay, maybe he's going to be, like, missing both of his legs. Like, they're going to find him there, and he's barely able to talk, and he's just there, like, with his arms or something. But he is just completely a pile of rubble. So, 
fuck. I guess Netherall did what he set out to do, and that was to take out that motherfucker. As a whole with the episode, the first half felt a little bit like, you know, just the aftermath of everyone getting what's going on, everyone trying to regroup and understand the situation and what they should do next. So it felt a little bit slow in certain areas in the beginning, but I was really appreciative of getting the explanation of that bomb because, again, it kind of had me a little bothered, like, how could a little bomb do something like that? But we get the explanation, like, this is more than just meets the eye, so that was good. From midpoint on, about 1343, I believe exactly, when Go makes that threat, you know shit is fucking real. You know this episode is not just an ordinary episode, and it kicks up into high gear. So definitely I gotta give this episode 8.5 out of 10. Very good episode. A little bit slow in the beginning, but it was necessary. You can't just keep having, you know, blam, bam, blam. You need stuff like that, so it was still necessary nonetheless. And overall, it was just like... God damn, the development of these characters and just overall the message, again, humans can be more monstrous than the monsters that they're proclaiming to be, you know, the threat and the antagonist. So I really like that the th things aren't always clear. Everything isn't always black and white, good and evil. Sometimes it's gray. And right now, Gon definitely fits in that gray area. He's making, you know, hostage situation. Now Pito is pretty much fucked. But let me know what you think, anime-only viewers. What do you think is going to go down now? Is Pito going to pretty much listen to Gon and follow him all the way through? What I'm imagining at this particular point, they're going to get to and she's gonna say, yo, I can't do nothing for him. There's nothing I could do. And Gon is just gonna go ape shit and it's gonna go down and she's not gonna, like, because at this particular point, she will do anything to protect Kamugi and get her back to the king. So I don't think she's gonna fight back even if Gon attacks her at, at the risk of like, you know, they're gonna kill my hostage. So I could see this going very good in Gon's favor at the very least. Even if he doesn't, even if the anger subsides, which obviously it's not because if he finds out Kite is permanently dead. He's going to go even more ballistic and fuck her up. But right now, going on his own, if she continues to stay on the path of, I need to protect Kamugi, she needs to get back to the king, things is looking good for Gon, but in a monstrous way. And also, what do you think is going to happen with the two ants left, the pretty much Yuppie and Poof? Are they going to go ballistic and start attacking everyone? Because Yuppie looks like he's reverting back to his old ways. Like, we're just going to kill everyone. I don't care. So are they going to just go on a monstrous rage and they're going to have to fight them off? Like, I don't think Knuckle, Tired, and the rest of these people can take them on. So something's got to happen. there got to be more bombs in place or something to take them out. And just your overall thoughts of the episode. Again, very good episode. I love the aftermath. I love the explanation of the bomb. So it wasn't a simple bomb and just seeing Gon's character's metamorphosis from who he was to who he is now, I wonder if there's no return. Like, this is who he has become and this is who he will be. And maybe uh, Kidoa will reevaluate their friendship after all this. But that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thumbs up for that moment where Gon was on some threatening killer shit because just to see a character come this far and completely make this change, it's unbelievable. Out for that world, and as always, people, have an awesome day.